Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, based on the time that you're assessing material. This is for the course Fluta Mobile App Development for week one. And I believe you are already on coolcharts.com because we'll be using the content on the com. So, Mobile App Development. Then, week one, we are supposed to cover this area. We have an overview of, Fruta, of the uh, Fruta mobile development, which will be using the DART programming. So this will be an introduction to the DART programming language. So we have an overview of the language. We we'll consider the environment for the DART, and now we can install the IDE, the integrated development environment, and also how we can install the DART environment as well. Then we will consider how we declare variables in DART and some of the operators we use in DART programming. So, you are warmly welcome. So, as I said, I will be using the content of week one. So, So what is that programming? Then many programming. So what makes it a unique programming language? So that is a programming language developed by Google. And the Fluta mobile application will be using or will be developing. It's based on the uh, that programming language. So that's why we need to have some basic knowledge of our, the that programming language so that we can easily develop the Fluta application. So that has its own virtual machine and is a transpiler. The difference between a transpiler and a compiler is that transpiler uh, generates from one programming language to the other. So like this one, it says a transpiler generates JavaScript equivalent of the DAT script. So if you have JavaScript, it will generate it to that script and the vice versa. Then the source to source translator translates normally. It is a little bit different from the lesson. So, like for example, when we are programming in C, those who have taken the C programming languages, so that one we write a plain English understandable test then it is being compiled to an assembly of a machine language for it to be executed so this that is a little bit different than that uh, type of uh, programming so that one is transpiler and the other one is a compiler that compile from compile from your c language to the assembly language So now, what makes the DART uh, programming unique? So uh, DART programming, uh, they also have the web version. So in the web version, instead of navigating through uh, page by page, there is one single. You'll be on one um, page, but there will be content of uh, the, the the page will still be there, but there will be loading of content. So an example is the Gmail. So in the Gmail, when you click on the message in your inbox, it doesn't load a new page. There will be a new uh, uh, load of the content onto the screen so that you can read it. So it will not redirect to a different page. Okay, so this kind of programming is what they use the DAT for. So the same with the Fruta application that will be developing. So we're loading content of uh, pages onto the screen so it's not, we're not moving from one page to the other okay so now we can write our that programming either online or you can also have a local uh, 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 
environment where you can be compiling your DART programming. So for the online, this is the DART part. So if you go to dartpad.dartlang.org, so if you're on this site, when you right click, it can take you to that site. So on that site, decide to use that environment and because you don't want to install the local environment for the coding, you can use that uh, environment online. So you just go there, then you type in your code, then you run it, then you can see the outcome. the pages let me go go it okay so that's the that part so you you have your code just click on run so when you click on run it will compile and it will be display on the screen for you this is just an example so later on in this uh, uh, material we will consider some of the brief uh, tests about the print print function so the print function just displays something on the screen and that programming have its main function which executes uh, your your uh, program so the program starts in the main then other part of the uh, the functions and of the other program is also by within the main. So we will later consider this uh, loop. It's called loop. That will be in the two of our programming language. But in the in the and the, today this week we will briefly talk about the print the print function and the main, which I have explained that the main is the main part of the program. So when you execute your that uh, program it starts running from the main and the main will call other parts of the program as well so that's it that environment that part for you so in this example it just prints the prints like i said just display something on the screen so whatever test you put within the single or double quotation of the print function it will be displayed on the screen later on we will run some example so that you can see it now if you want to test or code offline and you want to have it on your machine so that anytime you want you can code then you can install the dart sdk so now in this subsequent uh, tutorial is going to describe how you go to install your dart environment so now we can write code in that using either windows notepad or notepad plus plus or max or vim or right or esa so we can just use any ordinary and uh, test editor then we write the code then we save it as dot that so any code save as dot that is seen to be a that programming language uh, code so now after that then we can run our uh, file using the command uh, line and before you be able to use the command uh, line then you have to first of all install the that environment so that it to be able to run the command line now what do we mean by command line so a command line is normally a console uh, application you normally say so to, to run the command line you normally search for in your search you can search for cmd for command cmd so it will be the software for the command line for console writing so that is the command prompt so if you click on your command prompt then it will be displayed so that's where the command prompt starts so if I mention command line, command prompt, so this is what I'm talking about. So you first of all search it using the search box, 
cmd then you can start the command prompt application but we don't need it now so i'm going to close it so when you get the print where we need it then we will open it i'm just I have to explain it to you so that you'll be able to understand and i, I can i don't want to actually let you know okay let's continue so now so to install your that please go to this link or you can also go in the latest that uh, setup executable file or something but you can click on this link so i'm going to right click this link and that and then i try to get executable file to do the installation for my that environment okay so there are a number of them downloaded the development one so that's 64 bit windows so click it will download executable file for the sake of time i have already downloaded mine so you just click on it and then you wait till the download finish now so i'm going to click on my executable file which i have already downloaded so that is the file that system the dev dot setup so you only double click it to start the installation yes Okay, so you accept the agreement. Then next. Then next. Then please, when you are doing an installation, check the path it is saving. You can even copy it. You can even copy because we will need that path in our later setting. So you have to check the path it is saving for that uh, SDK. So please, mine is being saved on a C slash program files slash that then you click next then you click next then you click install now it's download from the internet the executable file so if after your download, please make sure your internet is still on. So after downloading the installer file, make sure your internet is on. Okay, to get additional files. So as you can see, the file is almost 300 megabytes. So make sure you have enough data when you are doing the installation. okay so our installation is still going on i believe yours is also almost about to complete
So now they, after they download, it's now doing the installation. So we wait. Okay, so our installation is almost done. Just click on next. Then we successfully install our DART environment. So now, if you want to use the command line, we have to go and set our environment. So we continue from the lecture notes. So you just click on finish. Okay. So we've done this part. But we've done that part. Okay, and we are on this path. So now, before you be able to write that commands in the console, the command prompt, you need to set the path so that whenever you type any that command, the command prompt will be able to recognize it. Now, to do that, you need to follow the following steps. So you go to the start screen you search e -M -V for environment e -M -V. so you see environment variables in the search results then you click on it so edit the system environment variable so you click on it Okay, so now in the system properties, the advanced, you click on environment variables. Now you look for path, this path. If path already exists, you just double click on it. You click on it, or you double click on it, then you make the changes. Or you can also click on it, then click on edit. Now if there is no path, in your windows that you are using then you click on new so the new the variable name is going to be path the same as uh, you can see a capital p a t h so that will be the path then the variable value is going to be the path where your uh, that uh, sdk can be located so like i told you when you are doing the installation you need to copy the path so that it will be easy for you so with the path that you copied you just have slash then bin to it to complete it so if you already have the path yeah just click on it then edit in some operating system when you click on it there, there will be a different window i'm using windows 8 there will be a different window so you just add the new one to the existing one but in this window is 8 you just write yours after a semicolon then you also add another semicolon to separate yours from the others so here i copied the path so that's what i've placed there so the path was c then the column slash program file slash that then they're supposed to end with a, a bin so slash bin slash bin then when you finish with yours you need to end with a semicolon to separate that one from the others as well so when you are done you just click on ok then you click on ok then okay okay we can verify if really our that is on that path so when we go to our c drive
You go to your C drive. You go to your program files. You are supposed to see the that. So our that okay. So the path that we needed this path as well. The that SDK. Okay. So we needed this path as well. So you can either just copy and paste, or you can add this path before the bin. So or you can just also just copy then when you go to the runtime environment in the power variable you can change what you already have but if you don't already have it then you can just add it to it and it's supposed to be the path to your bin so the bin is in that dash sdk so we need to add it to the path okay so you can just edit it so yeah I can just delete everything and paste the new one but I have the bin already so okay okay so it's going to be C semi uh, column slash program file slash that slash that dash sdk slash bin so that's the path where we have our bin where we have our that commands so we click ok then ok now after this stage if you open any uh, command, prom command prompt you just have to close it and reopen it again so let's see which of the fit the part we have already done so we've done this one, we've recorded our environment variables. Okay, so we check the path and that's the path then. We copy the path and we updated the path. So this is for people who don't have the path already there, like I explained. So the variable name is going to be a path capital P A capital P then small A then T then H then the value is going to be the path to your bin so if this is my path like you saw in the when I was updating my environment variables so if that is your path as well then you also have it there then now we are going to verify if our data has successfully been stored so we search for the command prompt again by now you should be able to search for command prompt and you should be able to use to because you will be doing a, num a number of command lines in our subsequent uh, slides so cmd okay so to check if the data has successfully been uh, installed just type d a R T. Now, when you press enter, and you didn't, you don't get anything like the command is not uh, recognized. Then it means that you successfully installed the that. But if you get any error that that the command DRT is not recognized in the command prompt, then your settings for the uh, path variable you did is incorrect. So let's check. So if you get a screen of the that history, okay. So like you see, so let's follow. And when you saw, the antivirus is brought missing. Okay. So now we successfully install our that. Okay, so now we can use our that in our command line. So you can type that commands in the command lines and it's going to work perfectly without any problem. But if you haven't uh, set mid setting of your variable path, 
then when you type DRT, you are going to get error. Okay. Now, there are two ways of writing our DART uh, programs. You can write it on uh, any of the notepad editors. Then we save it as dot uh, DRT. Then we can use the terminal, the console prompt, to run our uh, DART codes. We can also use an integrated development environment to run our DART programs. An integrated development environment, in short, IDE, is an interface that you can use to do the typing. And normally, the, the tools suggest some codes. When you start typing, it may suggest you know, certain possible code you may be using. And it's also possible for you to run your code within the IDE. Hmm. So it's, it makes it easier for coding for you than using the notepad and later compiling. Because with the notepad, you have to compile before you see the error. But some of the IDE, they can let you know that there is an error or give you suggestions of what to write even before you start the compilation. So the number of IDs for the, the, uh, for the DART, we have the Eclipse, we have the IntelliJ and the WebStorm. The IntelliJ and the WebStorm uh, are paid. They are paid IDs. So after 30 day free trial, you need to purchase it before you can use it. And that they will disable it. And I don't know, it depends on uh, how do you call it, your pocket. If you can afford, no big deal. But the Eclipse is for free. So I said, then why don't I use the Eclipse for the tutorial so that those who want the free version, they can just use the normal Eclipse. Those who prefer the IntelliJ and the Web uh, Storm, they can also do the setup as well by just doing it to follow the steps. So now, if you decide to use the Eclipse IDE, then these are the following steps to install your Eclipse. So first of all, you need to get the latest version of Eclipse. So you need to go to eclipse.org slash downloads. You can right click, then you go there. And remember, before you install your IDE, you need to install your DAT because they work along with your DAT. So before you install your IDEs, you need to already install your DAT because they will be using the DAT SDK as well. So instead of running it in the terminal, they are only running it in the IDE by the same SDK that they will be using. when you go to the Eclipse download, you just click on that get Eclipse I this this is the latest one so you just on download so now you just click on download to start the downloading of the executable file so it will install an executable file. It will download an executable file which you need to double click on it to install. So for the sake of time, I've already downloaded my Eclipse here. So you just download, then you also double click it. So I will install the one I've downloaded. So I just double click on my Eclipse. So now, there are three ways you can test your DART uh, codes. One, you can use the DART pad, but the DART pad is online. Two, you can use an IDE. We have the IntelliJ and the WebStorm and the Eclipse. The Eclipse is free, but the other two are paid. So, and three, you can use the terminal. Later on, you will see how we can use the terminal to be running our uh, DART uh, programs. So in the terminal, you only need to type your code in either Notepad or Notepad++. Then once you've done that, then you just save it as .dart. 
then you can run it in your terminal after putting in the codes. So we wait for the Eclipse installation to start. So the Eclipse installer. So we also follow that steps and we install our Eclipse. So while the installation is going on, let's go over using the terminal. So we come back to the installable part. So later we come back to here. Okay. So now this is where we are. So here you need to choose which of your uh, environment or the languages you'll be using the Eclipse for. So you have the Java developers, we have Enterprise Java developers, we have the C++ and the C developers, we have the web and the JavaScript developers, and we have the PHP developers. So which of, which of the, uh, the reason why you install, you are installing the Eclipse, you just choose it. So if you are doing Java programming, then you choose any of the Java developers. If you are and you use it for uh, programming C or C++, then you choose that option. If you use it for web and JavaScript, then you choose that option. Now, if now because we will need PHP in our Futa mobile app development at certain stage, I will entreat you to choose the PHP option so that when we are using it, you don't need to install that uh, feature in it. So we choose the ID for PHP developers. I click on install. So this is the way to install our path. So program for them. This is where the Java environment will be. Java virtual machine. And this is where our installation will be. So later, if you want, you want to uninstall it, you just go to that path where it is here to uninstall your Eclipse. Then Eclipse, the installation doesn't come with a control panel. You only go to the folder, then you delete it, then you delete the desktop icon, then that is it. So you just click on install. And the installation will be Okay, so you just accept the agreement. So you wait. So you accept the agreement as well. And soon our installation will complete.
okay so our installation is completed so we can just launch our eclipse Eclipse does not come with the DART plugin. We will need to go visit the marketplace of Eclipse. Then we search for DART. Then we install it before it will be able to give us the features for writing a DART project. So once our Eclipse finish loading, we will go to our marketplace. Then we just search for that, then the bin. Then we just install it and add it to our eclipse. Okay, so here Eclipse wants to know where we'll be saving our project. That's what is being referred to as a workspace. So you can create a folder where you will be saving your Dart project so that you know that if you are looking for Dart codes, you know that oh, I created them in this folder so you can directly go for it. So, for example, I have uh, created a folder that I have named Dart project. So I will browse to that uh, folder and select that folder so that all my DART projects will be saved over there. So to change the default uh, Eclipse workspace, you just click on Browse. Then you can go to the directory where you want to use the directory I want to use so I just click on select that then I launch it so you can use you can click on use this as a default and do not ask again so that always when you are starting a new project it will be using this one so that it doesn't always ask you Okay, so that is our welcome dish for them. So like I said, we click on when you install the uh, Eclipse, it does not come with the that um, um, programming environment directly. So you need to visit them. So as you can see, the marketplace, it is using the internet as well. So as we are doing all this, we need to be connected to the internet. So we wait till it close 
then we can just search so when it is possible to type in something here then we search for that so it will show us a dart plugin then we can install it Seems like it is not responding. Let's punch it again. Because I'm taking the video as well, my things are a little bit. Okay, so you can search for your dots with the search field. So you just type that D A R T in the search bar. Then you install it. So it's that. Then we press the enter key. So it will search for the dot plugin. Okay, so that is our DART plugin, DART port. So we just install it. So it will be fetching the content. It is done. It will ask us to confirm to install. So we just click on confirm. Okay, so we agree, we are set the terms in the license. So we just click and then finish. Okay. So it took as you can see. As you can sum your tabs bar, it's the eclipse is loading. So once it finishes load, loading, then we can run our that programs. Okay, so we need to restart our app. So we click on restart now. yoga and eclipse so when our that uh, our eclipse loads we will put our first that program okay so now we can create our first that so to do that you just go to file Then, then you click on next okay so since the installation we made uh, the settings for our default location then that is our default location but those who may not have uh, chose the default location at the time of the installation, then they may have to the, uh, at least to use the uh, Eclipse quest space. So if you want to change it now, then you can just click on, on check on use default location. 
then you will be given the opportunity to browse. You just click on browse. Just click on browse. Then go to where you want to save your project. But we have uh, doing the installation. We indicate the location where you should save our file, and this is correct. So we we'll use the default location. So our uh, name. Normally, if you are writing your project, you should use the week that uh, you are writing the project for the lesson so that you know if, if you are looking for a particular source code, for instance, if you know which two is for looping, then if you are looking for a looping example to make reference to, then you know that if I go to the week two uh, folder, I'll be able to get sample codes for the looping. So it is appropriate to name your project for these lessons by the weeks. So this is week uh, one, so I can name my project week one, or you can make it that program, but because it's already in the that uh, folder, then you know that all comes there are that folder, so you can name it week one. Then you just click on finish. Now we updated our uh, that SDK when we are we doing the installation. So now, doing the installation, it will pick the DART SDK from the one you have on the drive. So remember that you need to first of all install your DART before you have Eclipse. If you don't, uh, if you haven't installed your DART and you are installing the DART plugin for Eclipse, it will not work because it will not see the DART SDK. So you first of all need to install your DART SDK like on the on the top uh, slides before we go to this stage you need to install them before you install your apps so once you feel that you've given a project a name and selected your location now you can just click on finish now when you finish creating your project you can just close the welcome page okay now at the left hand side in this panel are where your projects are so we have week one so now we continue with the slide then we know so we've done this part creating the projects we've done that we've done this part already we fill the form already we've done this week then. so now adding a that file to the project is a step where we are so you have to right click on the project name so you right click on the project name so you click on you right click on the project name then new then file so these are project name so you just right click it right click is the right click of the mouse so you right click it then new then file so your file should be of the extension dot d a r t so my file let's say it is hello dot d a r t then i click on finish So once we've done that, let's continue. Okay, so run your DAT file. How do you run your DAT file? Well, before we run our DAT file, we need to put a code. So to run your DAT file, we click on the run icon. So you first of all click on the dash file, then you click on the the run icon, the right arrow, the green circle. 
when you click on it it will ask you there are two options whether you are running that program or you are running the file so in this case we are running the file if we are we decide to run the hello.dart now you should take note that if you choose the dark program it will look for main dart because that for every program you need to have your main dot dart where it will start its uh, main screen other one will be the content of uh, the execution of what is in the main so if you choose run as that dot program and you don't have a main dot dart in it it's going to give you an error but if you are just running a particular file please you need to choose run file so like i've explained if you are running a file and you choose uh, run uh, program and there is no main.dart it will give you this error like you can see on the screen so you are running a file just choose run as file so now to test let's copy our program that we have seen on the screen so we can just copy this part of our void main print so we have our void main print we just copy it into our code okay now what this code does that all that program starts with the name main is where the execution starts then all any other part of the function is written in the main between the curly bracket now the print displays information on the screen so whatever you put in this single or double quotation between the bracket is what will be displayed on the screen so for example this is hello world so if i run this program like i told you when you click on run you need to choose run far because you don't have main dot dart in it so we are not test we are not running the program we are running the file so we have run far then okay then because i didn't save when i paste so you just save and run okay so that's it so hello world is displayed on our screen so you can change the text here let's say welcome to that programming then we save and run so well that programming so we see then we run an alternative way of running your file is that you can right click on your file The machine is getting <laughs> slow, so it's running at the time we are repeating our file.
because of the video I'm taking, it has made the machine to reverse clock. But you can type in whatever you want to type here. Then you save your project. When you save your project, then you run it. I delete you there is an error. So then because of the, the way the system I'm running the lesson, so it's freezing the machine. For you, everything should be okay for you. So you just you see the machine is slowing and stuff, freezing and stuff. You just write whatever you want to write here. You can write your name. My name is So you just save when you run. Now, and another way of running your design is you can right click your, then you choose run as, then you can choose run as. Hmm. This one I made a change, it's not running the old one I had. The machine is really slow. You can see the old one I wrote. So welcome to that program that you was in there is an error. It's not running it. Okay. So for you, you are not taking any video, so your machine will be faster. So any test you put here, any test you put here, when you click on run, then it's supposed to be displayed on the screen. Now what you should take note is that the run there are two runs if you are running one far choose run as far if you run as program and your folder does not have name dot that you will get an error because when you are running a program the that will look for main dot da to start the program from there so if you don't have the that dot uh, name you are going to get errors so in case we have the name this one main dot d a r t then when we run as a program then we will not face that problem so you press copy then we delete this one then we name We put or we can rename this one as name. So let's name it as name. Okay. So now, if you name it and you run as a program, it's not supposed to give you any problem because now it will be locating the main program. Okay. Now it will take long at to update. <coughs> okay, now if you run as a as a program at so let's say run as that program. Okay, so now you see it has run it. My name is Koki. So now we didn't get any error because we have name dot d a r t inside. So that's what we should be taking note of. If you decide to use the Eclipse to be writing our future 
um, that programs. If you are running as a program, remember you should have main.dart. So it means when you are creating your project, your default, the first file you will create should be main.dart. And you can type your code there. In that case, you can run it as a program. But if you have a different file name, you should run it as a file and not as a program. Okay, so now I believe you are okay with the uh, Eclipse environment, how you can be writing your code and be running it. So we move on to basic syntax and explanation. Then, in that case, since we are familiar with the Eclipse, we will be using the command prompt. So that people who also want to use a command prompt to be running their DART can also get familiar with it. So every DART or every programming language is basically made up of uh, many of these, especially object-oriented programming languages. If you are used to some object-oriented program like C++ or Java, some of these things should be familiar to you. So we have variables in every programming language. We have variables and how they declare the variables. Then we have operators and how they are written. Then we have classes. We have functions. Then we have expression and programming constructs. We have decision making and looping constructs. We have comments. Then we have libraries and packages. Then we have type definition. Then we have data structures, which are referred to as collections and generics. So today we will consider variables and operators. In our subsequent week we will consider decision making and looping and I think maybe classes and functions. So we've already explained the part of the uh, main program, the default one, the, the early one we wrote. So the main, every program should have the main. That's where the code is being executed. Then the printf, if you want to display something on the screen, hey, sorry, it's not printf. <laughs> printf is only in the C program. So you are not on doing C program. It's print. Here, that C program is, please remember. Here, this is only print, not printf. So print, then you put the display test in the double quotation. And you put the display test in the double quotation. Now, if you are executing your lesson in the terminal, we've done all already using the ID. So, for the terminal, you need to type your code in either Notepad or Notepad. If you decide to use Notepad, you can download Notepad in this location. When you right click it, you get it. All Windows operating system comes with the Notepad. So, if you search Notepad, you get the default notepad if all machines has you can also write your code inside so if you search So you, those of you using Windows, you just search for Notepad. Notepad is on every Windows. So for me, I have also installed the Notepad Plus Plus book. But if, if you haven't installed this one here, you only have this one, so you can just open it. But those who will be doing uh, web design will be using Notepad Plus Plus to do our designing so you can download it now so on the you just right click the link provided in the course material you can just right click it then go to the their page then you can download it by if part and the part plus they all do the same so now executing a terminal you could that you'll be saving your dash project in
So this one we also did when we were doing the eclipse, using the eclipse. So you can do that. So then let's continue. So if you've done that already, then you open a new class class, then you just save load dot that in that folder. Then navigate to where you, you your project is saved. Now, if you decide to use the terminals, then your project should be in the C drive. So your because the by the command prompt takes you in the C drive. So your project can be in the C drive. So you just navigate to where it is, then you can run your uh, your code. So if you are using and uh, you decide to use it, then save your project on the C drive. So I think I've created a project called that underscore project in C drive. So I have to navigate to that place. Now to leave out to leave out of a directory, use the C D then with the two dot. So that one will make you leave of a directory. And to move into a directory, we use uh, so the CD without uh, the dots. So, for example, my my that project is stored in the C, and by default, the command started at uh, Godwin TUR, which is a folder. So, I have to move out of that folder, and I have to move out of users before I will get to C. So, I do two CD uh, with two dots. So, I move to directly get to my main C drive before I can move to my and uh, that project. So in example you can see that I move C D with two dots I press enter it moves out of this directory then gets to the user's directory. Then I also do another C D with two dots then it moves out of the user's directory to my C drive. And in my C drive I can move to my folder which is the that is the C D command. So here I just write C D the that moves to my that project uh, directory. So in that directory, I can run my uh, that uh, uh, program file. So let's say I save the file hello dot in that directory. Then you copy and paste. You paste the code, the big code we have, which prints out hello. -ness. But before we get that, we get stage let's basically look at some of those look at identifiers in that so there are rules for identifiers like when you decide to use declare a variable name there are rules you have to follow to declare a variable name and these are the rules this identifiers can include both digits. However, the identifier cannot begin with a digit. So you cannot start a variable name with a, a digit. A digit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to uh, 0, 1, to up to 9. So you cannot start any variable name with that, uh, with a number beginning at the uh, uh, starting point. No. Numbers can be in between. So you have to start with either an underscore or a letter. Then you can put the numbers in green. And it says that and then try to include symbols except for underscore and dollars. So uh, you cannot use uh, maybe arts and the other special symbols except the underscore and the dollars you can use by. And they must be unique. So you cannot give two uh, variable names of the same two variables of the same name. No, you get a compiler error that there, there has already been declared a name of that. So all of these identifiers must all be unique. And identifiers are case sensitive in that. So if you make a variable starting with a small letter and another variable starting of the same character starting with a capital letter, then they are two different addresses. So if you understand you are calling that variable and change of any of the character, the case of any of the characters, you are going to get error. 
because identifiers in C are case sensitive. So for example, let's say you've declared a variable called first name with the F small. And the next time you are calling it, you make the F capital. No, you are going to get a syntax error because they are not the same because they are case sensitive. So these are some of the legal valid uh, identifiers. You see that it doesn't have any space between them. So identifiers cannot contain spaces. So it doesn't have any space there. If there's no digit starting here. And so here, it doesn't have any keywords. So identifiers cannot also have keywords. So keywords are reserved words in the programming environment. And in order not to conflict with them, you cannot use them in your personal identifiers. So an invalid identifier is var, because var, as we will come to see, is used to declare variables, so you cannot use it. Now this one is invalid because it has a space between the first and the name. We said identifier should not have space. This one is invalid because it has a dash. We said we can't have special character except underscore and a dollar. So this is invalid. Then this one is invalid because it has a digit starting. So we said that digits cannot start or identifiers. It can be in the in the middle or somewhere or at the end, but it cannot be the starting point. Okay, so these are some of the keywords so you have to take note so that you will not use them in your personal identifiers. So we have as one asset, is synchronizing to and the rest. If return var, all these ones are reserved, so you cannot use them in, in, in your personal identifiers. So you have to take note of them so that when you are declaring your variables or your identifiers for maybe a function or a method, then you shouldn't be using any of these keywords. Okay, then white space and line breaks. So in in programming, the that ignores the uh, indention. Indention is the spaces to leave or maybe the the uh, tab, you click on a tab to leave an, a, a few lines so that you can easily read uh, your code. So these ones, uh, of course, it ignores them. So you can use them just to make your uh, code easily and nicely uh, readable. Then that is case sensitive, like, like you've seen, or I've already discussed or told you about it. Then all statements should end, should end with a semicolon. So in some programming language, you don't need to end them with a semicolon, like I think you should have basic. You don't need to end statement with semicolon. But in that programming, all statement needs to end with a semicolon. So if you write a declare variable, which will come later to see, and you don't end with a semicolon, you get a syntax error. Because every line of code is supposed to end with a semicolon. A single line can contain multiple statements. That's if you want to use a single line to write multiple statements, then of course each of the statements you have to separate them by semicolon. Then in comments, you can also use comments in that. So those of you have have some knowledge about programming, you can see that they, we normally add comment to our code so that you easily understand your code. Sometimes you yourself, if you write a code. And don't comment it. Some days or some months or some years later, your own code, if you are trying to figure out why it is so, it becomes a challenge for you. So that's why it's advisable that you comment your code so that it will be for your own good and as well as people who will be working on your code so that they can easily understand your code. So we, are, we have two ways of commenting. We have the double slash for single line commenting. So that one is only done on a single line. So once it ends here, if you extend to the next line, you have to also use a double slash again. So because it's by line by line. Then we have the block comments. The block comments are placed between a slash and a star and a star and a slash. So in between the stars, all the things you, you write there are all comments. So they are seen as comments. So uh, when when, the, uh, when you comment something, it is not taken as part of your code. So in a blog comment, you just put your
comment between the star, the two stars. So you have a slash, then a star. Then you write your comment. Then you end with a star and a slash. But a single line, the single comment, each of the lines, you have to start with a double slash. Now, we have data types in most or all programming languages. And data type is just a, a space you have to reserve on the memory so that you can put something on it. So if you haven't declared a variable, then you haven't specified a data type on it in some programming language, you get a syntax error because when you declare the data type, it tells a compiler uh, to leave an amount of a uh, size of a memory that will be capable to store whatever you want to store over there. So data uh, types enables us to store and information on the memory by declaring your uh, variables. So there are a number of data types that you can use based on the type of information you'll be storing on the memory. So we have in that we can have numbers and the numbers we have double for that that that's mass. So if you you have an input to store on the memory which contains this mass you need to declare that data type as double. So for example, if you are writing the program to take the salary of uh, employer, uh, people in the company, then you have to de declare that variable as double. Then in that case, the amount of salary can be in decimals because someone may earn maybe 600.50 Ghana cities or whatever currency it is. So for salaries and amounts, normally we declare them as double because they can be in decimals. Then with another number we have is the int, int for integers. So all variables that are supposed to, are supposed to be integers, then you declare them as int. For example, if you are writing a program to take the ages of students, you know, normally we don't have a fraction of age. We normally approximate it to the whole number. So in terms of age, you can declare that variable as int. So when you are declaring the variable, indicating the data type of the variables you'll be using, or you are reserving the space on the memory, you are declaring what kind of data will be stored over there, then it's based on the type of information you'll be stored. For now, we've considered numbers. If it's going to be in fractions, you have to declare your number variable as double. If it's going to be an integer, you have to declare your number variable as int. Now, we also have the string uh, data type. So the strings are normally uh, test uh, data. So for example, if you are declaring a variable to store the name of uh, people, Names, you write them in text. So you're supposed to declare your data type as string. And normally we put strings in double quotation or single quotation. So any variable which is in the double quotation or single quotations are referred to as uh, string. Then we have the boolean. So the boolean, we use a keyword bool, B O O L. So a boolean in programming is either true or false. So normally we use them to check conditions based on what we are doing. We will consider looping and if statements and the rest decision making the side week two. So the boolean normally is either true or false. For example, if I'm writing a code to check if uh, the person is of age, then I can declare a variable maybe is under age. So I can give it either true or false based on the age of the person. So if the person is below 18, I can set the underage variable to be uh, true. If the person is more than uh, 18, 18 and above, I can set the underage variable to be true. So uh, to be false. So based on the value of this uh, boolean, I can know what to do in the coding. So boolean is normally true or false uh, values. So, and it uses a keyword bool, B O O L. Then we have the list and the map. Those of you who have done uh, uh, 
by array in other programming languages, the list and the map are similar to array where we keep the number of collections in them and we, we use them. Then we also have the, uh, the dynamic data type. The dynamic data type uh, normally it doesn't specify the data type of the variable. So normally we use bar, then we write the name of the variable. So that uses dynamic data types. So when you declare var and the variable based on the value you put in that uh, variable, then that will know that, oh, okay, this variable you declare was for int. Based on the value you put inside this variable, you declare is for string. This variable you declare is for this. So the next time you are putting a different data type inside, you get a compiler error because you cannot be using uh, a data type that can take many data types. Okay, so we come to variables. In my previous sayings, I've been using variables, 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 variables. What are variables? So variables is simply put a memory you reserve on the a space you reserve on the memory so that you can put or store information over there. And in other programming languages, you have to specify the data type and you assign a name to that variable. So in order, if you specify the data type, like I said previously, they will know the amount of space to reserve on the memory so that when you uh, put in that information there to the size will be big enough. So that is basically variable. So variables follow the, uh, the rules of identifiers we consider. Variables cannot have the keyword so you cannot call a variable uh, for f o r like we saw in the other uh, that part code the for is a keyword for looping so you can't use it you cannot use a, a, the keyword v a r you can't use a keyword this and the rest so all the keywords which was listed previously you can't use them then variables can be alphanumeric you can have both letters and numbers in the variables but a number a digit cannot start the variable name when you are giving a name to the space on the menu you can't start with a number a number can be between or at the end but it cannot be at the beginning and you can't have special characters in your variable names except underscore and dollars and there shouldn't be any space in between your variable names it shouldn't contain any space in between the variable names. So, like I said, when you are declaring a variable, you declare a variable makes it possible to reserve a space on the memory so that the, the specified information can be stored over there. In many programming, which that also use, uh, you have to specify the type of data before you write the name of the variable. So you specify the data type, you leave a space, then you give name to the variable. Uh, you give name to the, the space you are reserving for the memory to put the information there. So these are examples. So we have string name. So if we want to reserve a space to store names on the memory, we can declare this uh, variable we call the, the string tells that the information we'll be storing is going to be of the type string, a test, a test information. Then we give that a name. So the name we are giving to that memory is name. Now, when you are choosing the name, choose names that uh, connotes what uh, the type of information that should be saved there. That you yourself, if you are reading your code, you'll be able to understand. For example, if I have named this one string A, how will somebody reading my code and understand that oh his name I'm going to store there? But any lay man who sees the string name knows that oh okay this may contain a name. So it makes it easy for you yourself to understand your code in some days later, and also for other programmers to also fully understand your code. So just reading as just a caption of it, another programmer will be able to understand fully. So these are just example, and the names you can also join two words, but you can't leave a space between them. 
then we say that all syntax should end with a semicolon. So once you write, you end each of the, the statements with a semicolon. Okay, so if you want to declare a variable to store ages of students, how will you declare it? Now, like I said previously, age, normally we store them in integers. So the data type is supposed to be int. Then you can give it a name. You always use name that reflects what you are doing. So I can call it age. So my declaration will be just int. Then I leave a space, then age, then semicolon. So here, yeah, any programmer that says this knows that, oh, I've reserved a space to save a name uh, information there. Then salary, I can also declare it as double. So double, I leave a space, salary, then semicolon. Then bool, for true or false uh, values, I can, we have bool is underage. So here, yeah, the value of is underage is either going to be true or false. Then based on the value too, I can make decisions in my code. Okay. Okay. So now, when you assign a value to a variable, that's you are storing the uh, something into your variable you uh, you reserve. We use a keyword, the equal to key. We use the equal to key to assign the value. So the value will be at the right hand side, where the variable name will be at the left hand side. So, and like I said, string values are in double quotation. So if it's a string, you have to put it in a double quotation or a single quotation. If you begin with a single quotation, you have to end with a single quotation. If you begin with a double quotation, you have to end with a double quotation. So these are examples. I also explained that when you can use the var keyword to ignore the data type. So based on the value you assign to that memory space, the that programming environment to know that oh this is a type of data that is supposed to be stored here. So we have var first name is equal to Godwin. Then var last name is equal to Ashon. Remember they are text, so they are supposed to be in double quotation. Then var I think this is supposed to be h, so it may be type error. So var h is equal to 20. Now, in this uh, var way of defining, now later on, if you change this value to any other data type, it's, it's, it will, you get a, 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 an error. For example, if I've declared my first name to be string, now if I give it a value of 1, I'm going to get error because I I cannot assign an integer value to a string data type. That you should also take note of. Now, all uninitialized variables have an initial value of an of now. So if you write, you declare a variable and you haven't assigned a value to it, you will get the now as a value. So for example, in this code, when you run, you have void main. Then in the curly bracket, we declare an integer. We haven't assigned any value to the integer. So when we print it out, the value is going to be now because we haven't given it any value. So that's what you see here. When you copy and paste this one in your uh, ID, in your uh, Eclipse, when you run this, you get now as an output because you haven't assigned any value to it. Now we have the final and the cons. These are keywords for declaring constants. Any value you attach final and cons to it means that it cannot be changed so in the part of the code you cannot assign any other value to it and normally when you are, uh, use a keyword final cons when you are declaring it you have to assign a value to it at the point you are declaring so the syntax for the final is just the final then the variable name then it's equal to and you assign a value to it with a semicolon or you can also write final if the data type, then the variable name, then equal to, then you assign a value to it. Then with the const keyword to is similar. So instead of final, here you can const. The variable name then is equal to, then the, the value assigned to it. Then with the const to, you can have the data type, the variable name, then you assign a value to it. Uh, I've already explained that the equal to key is for assigning a value. So if you write this kind of whatever value you see, it will be saved on the memory, by the name 
of the variable name you specify here. Then the const make it that it is a constant, so this value can never be changed. So, example, if you have way main, then find an age is equal to 18. Now you can print the value of age, which will display the 18. Then we have uh, this is an example for the constant uh, keyboard example. So you have const pi is equal to 3.142. We know it's a pi is a constant. So you can declare constant to the point. So here we have this. And you have double radius is equal to 5. So in the space we name radius, we put a value of 5 inside. Then we have a space we name area, which is the calculation of we multiply the the, the pi. Then we multiply the radius in another radius because we know that area of a circle is pi r squared. So we multiply the r twice, which makes it squared. Then we have the pi. Now later on, you realize you come to know that multiplication in programming is the star key. So if you are doing multiplication of variables, you just use the star key anytime it is a multiplication. Then we said print is for display information. So we display the information. The output is now if you are displaying a value inside a, a double quotation, then you have to use the dollar, then you put the variable name in the curly bracket. So that's how it is written in that. So here we want to display the content of the area. So we have dollar in the curly bracket and the name which is the area, which is the content we want to put. The name of the variable comes between the curly brackets after the dollar sign in the double quotation. So once a variable is declared for a constant, you cannot change it. When you change it, you get a syntax error. For example, if we modi modify the previous code and after some time, we declare, we change the value of our pi. Initially, it was 3.142. Now, if we change it to 3.14, here yeah, we get a syntax error because, like I said, once you've assigned a value to a constant, you cannot change them. So, if you change the value, yeah, if you assign a different value to it, you are going to get a syntax error. Okay, so you can run this code in your any of your environment. Then you can see what I, I meant. So if you open your Eclipse ID, you, you can create a new uh, DAX file and copy this code inside and save and run. Then you see that it will say it will give you an error. It says when you run, you get syntax or that you can't assign to the constant variable pi because the constant variable pi you already in the value to, so you cannot really assign. Any other value to it again. Okay. Now we are now I think our last for our content. So we have the test. Now, if you are a programmer, you have to take note of this because many times we use this and operate this in programming, especially when we are doing mass coding. If you are writing an application for uh, the banks. Or any other calculation applications, you need these operators in order for you to be able to implement them. Now, if you are doing addition, if you are writing an addition syntax, like for example, maybe you declare two variables a and b, and you store five in a memory space, and you store six in b memory space. Now, if you want to make multiple additions of these two. Then you have to use the plus key. So it's going to be first of all, you have to declare your variable so that the space should be reserved for them. Then you can put value in those two spaces. Then after that, then you can do the calculations in them. So let's say, for instance, I reserve a space of integer or double, I reserve a space of double data type. Now, how do we say we reserve a space on the memory cell by declaring a variable for it? So then double, if it's of the type double, which means it can be of decimals. So my declaration is going to be double, then I give name to that space. So I can say double A, then I can assign a value to it by writing equal to, and the value I can make it uh, five. Then I can, then always every statement should end with a semicolon. 
So I'll write double A is equal to uh, 5. Then I end with a semicolon. Then I reserve a space for B. So I will say, you can say B is also should be of the type double. So we have double B. Then let's say I assign a value of 2 to it. So double B is equal to 2. Then I also end with a semicolon. So now I can perform addition on those two numbers. So I can have A plus B. Then I can assign the value on the memory of another. So I can declare another variable I can call double C. Then I can compute the addition of both A and B and store the result inside. So in the subsequent one, we'll see an example. So we have A for addition. The manual the key is for subtraction. Then division, we use a slash key. Then the multiplication, we use a star like I've already explained in the previous one. Then the modulus or remainder, we use a percentage uh, key. Then if you want to make increment, you want to increase a value. Uh, if you insert a value, you've stored a value on the memory and you want to increase it by one. You just write the name of that uh, memory. If the memory is by name A, you declare A, double A is equal to five. Then you want to increase it to six. If you just write A plus plus, so the value will be increased by one. So that's what you use the plus plus. If you want to reduce by one, you just use A minus minus. So that value we have on the memory, it will just reduce it by one. So this is just an example. So this is just an example. So you can create a DAX file. Then you copy and paste this code type. Then you run. But I'm going to explain the code so that when you run, you understand what is going on. Like we said, your DAX program should have your main function. So you have grade main. So this is constant when you are starting your DAX program. So this void main bracket, then you have your opening curly bracket, then you close with your opening uh, closing curly bracket. So your code will be will be between this opening and closing curly bracket. So okay. So now we declare a variable by name A. So we are reserving a space on the main bit to store five in it. And the name we're given to that space A. So we have double A is equal to five. Then all statements in that program in any or in some other program language will end with a semicolon. So we have double, which is the name we reserve for the space, equal to is to assign the value. Then the value is five. Then we have uh, the semicolon. So we are assigning five to our memory space with name A. Then we are assigning two to our memory space with name B. Okay. Now we created a space another space we call it c and in the c what value what are we storing there we said add the value of what we have in a and b so we have a plus b the value of and we have we've stored over there you add them then you store the results in our c memory space remember we said uh, equal to is to assign the value so first it will be the computation we say addition is plus so we have the value of A, we are adding the value of A to the value of B. Then the result, the equal to means put it in the memory space by name C. So the double just indicate the type of data which the memory is supposed to expect. This is double, that one is also double. So we have A plus B, you assign the value of C. So now since our A is 2 and our B is so, so we and on our C have A plus B. So we have the value stored on A memory and B memory. Then the result we save it on C. So here yeah, this is just on the point the plus for addition. Now for division, also creating a space and makes a double data type because it comes in mass. These values we created a space by name D. Then we use a slash for this. so we divide a by b. So the value stored divided by the value stored in d. So the result call it in d. So the equal to some and the value to the memory. So then we have said also a star is for multiplication. 
So into multi value stored in the memory A by the value stored we have five and B we have two. So it brings us a value to this memory. So we assign the result to our memory. You will have that value. We have F equal to now the percentage for remainders. So it's like or it's like five modulus two. So five modulus two is the result. It's written, the remainder is when you divide two, so there will be a remainder of one. So plus two one. So the value will be assigned to our memory space F. So to explain the plus plus we have a plus plus. So our value plus it means increase it by one. So now our a will have a value of six. Then we assign that value to our G. A plus plus. So our A is having of six now. Then we assign that value to it. We need our results. We are displaying our results. So when we have now we had like I when you are using the printer when you are displaying the information in the Kelly bracket, then the dollar bracket and the variable name comes. So here we have a the value stored a. So we have this this stored in, then this will display the value stored in B. We so say print is just for displaying. So the dollar bracket and the variable name is will have, have the content of what is inside that memory. So this we write it. So the, then here we have two inside. So this will see seven inside because when we add the two, we get seven. So, two, seven. so we have a so value B divided. So this just will tell the reason that saving B will display the result in B. Apply the value of value of B. The result is what we save in the result. In B. You find the remainder of five five to so the increment. So A increment is equal to G. Then we have H is equal to the increment of the difference. Now, the efficient because when we did the plus plus, the value of a change, so it's not telling with our results. So code, I'm going to put it in our notes part. It's when we did it because we are supposed to make six and we are displaying the results, so it's not telling with. So, yeah, then we have four plus plus, so we can display this things here. Thanks. So it means five. Okay, so is it? When we in, when we store here, still this one. So store before we can store a before we increase it. Okay. G. Then there another variable double G equal to our a plus plus stop our a by writing this code we can have our we save it we store the increment then okay a year change so it will not make sense six value so then here we can i content of a decrement but it's increased, so now we can have the four hours. Okay. So now we will see and folder for the script sex I indicated that in the terminals I will save in my project in the C drive. So I will save it in the C under that project. See in a dash project, I can call it uh, operate test dot that. Okay, so okay, so once you save it dot that, it says that it's a dash uh, file. So now we can run our terminal command. So we have your cmd cmd to open your terminal command then we navigate to where our project is 
So we have CD, but now you should be able to be doing this. CD, we we'll move out of this directory. CD, then dot, two dot, we we'll move out of that directory. CD dot, we we'll move out of that directory. Now we can move to our that project directory. So that project. Okay, now we can run our that uh, uh, file. So it's just the keyword that. And the name of our file was uh, operators dot that. Okay, so we we'll read it and run. So it's not seen that far. Why is it not seen that far? Why is this one seen as a test file? Uh, a notepad is seen as a test file. We name it dot test extension. So let's do it. It's still saying it's a Let's see if it has saved it as a dark or dot it has added a dot system. Okay. So now it's saying it as an extension. So we can try the command again. So to re go back to a command you've already typed, you just press the upper key. So that command comes again then. You can run the command again. Okay. So like you see, now it has run successfully. So now we have 5 plus 2 is equal to 7. Then 5 plus 5 divided by 2 is equal to 2.5. And 5 times 2 is equal to 10. Then 5 modulo 2 is equal to 1. Then if you increase, okay, then we have a problem in here. Because if you increase 5, it's supposed to be 6. So why is it still... Five. What value were we displaying? Increment is equal to so in H. Something. Six. Still five. So we have five here. Then we have H is supposed to contain value of ten 
Okay, so let's plug the A value there because that value contains the input value. So we have uh, we can call the increment then we add before we assign the value. So let's say A plus plus. So we increase the value of A now to six, and we will have it assigned to our H. So now when we have the value of 5 is equal to either A or H is supposed to be the same. Then we have, so let's first of all skip the equipment before we assign the value. So we can have double I is equal to A after we increase the value. It's equal to A. So now we can save our file, then we run it again. Okay, so let's see if it's correct. Okay, so now it's correct. So we have five. If you increase it, it's six. Now it used to be six. Now if you decrease it, it goes to five. So now everything is working perfectly. So now, so it means that when you are assigning the value, you need to increase before you assign the value because it doesn't do the increment and assign at the same time. So you need to increase your value then after it has been stored, then you can assign it to wherever you want to assign it to. Okay, so this is where we are end, we end the week one. And it seems like a little bit long, but you can take your time to gradually go through. So there are two ways of running your that uh, files. You can use the ID, the Eclipse, and you can use a terminal. So the advantage of the ID, the Eclipse, is that the tests are colored. So you can know the, what are variables and what are variable names. But if you have to use you can see, there is the notepad, they are just you know, the same color. So you know, it makes it a little uh, difficult, but if you know, maybe your memory space is limited, so you cannot have your ID, then you can be following this one. So when you type in there is an error, it will tell you that there is an error. Then also take note. I in the previous example I put on the slide, I use a notes part plus plus. So that one I did I didn't have to uh, change the save as option to uh, types. By default, it it's it, it selects the test dot txt. So even if you have the dot that here and you still have this one, it, it names it as uh, this is just a name then dot txt. So it will be seen as a test file. So please, those of you who will be using the terminal, you have to change, select this one to all files. Then when you select it to all files, then it will, it will receive it as a dot file. So please take note so that you don't get the error I got was running my code. Okay, so thank you very much. So, if you have any issue, just log in to your cool chat account. Then you click on chat with an instructor. When you go to the home page of the profile, click on chat instructor. So, no problem with the installation. I think all the steps are clear. So, if you follow all the steps, you shouldn't have any challenge. But in case you are or you want a further explanation of something, just log in to your account. Then when you log in and you come back to this page, you see the button called chat with an instructor. Then you can click on it. If you've already sent me a message before, when you log in, you have a chat history. So you can just uh, send me a new message and I can reply. I thank you very much for uh, reading this course. And I believe this week we will be able to install our DART. So in the subsequent weeks we will be doing a DART uh, programming language then we find we will install our Android Studio. So if you have time you can also check with 5. 
then you can also install the Android Studio before it, you start to run that program. But since the Flutter uses, uh, before you start with the Flutter program, but since the Flutter uses the DAR program, we have to introduce you to the DAR programming language before we start with the Flutter mobile development. So once again, thank you very much and have a lovely day. Bye.